Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Kirsten. We're continuing on the spiritual disciplines, um, those things that you can do at home to kind of strengthen your relationship with God. We've arrived at our big pillar foundation kind of piece today and that is prayer. Now prayer is such an extensive topic in uh, Christianity because it's so foundational that really I'm just giving you like half of a primer to get started today. Um, there are so many books and resources and ways that you can pray out there um, that I really encourage you um, after today's video to go and read more because I am by no means an expert on this subject. But let's dive right in. So prayer is something that every Christian does, but nobody tells you kind of how to start doing it or kind of what the process is. Um, I really struggled with prayer for a long time because there was just this expectation that you become a Christian and all of a sudden you know how to pray and, um, you know, you should be good at it. And that's not true at all. You'll hear me say over and over again with these disciplines that it's a marathon, not a sprint. And people train and learn how to run marathons. The same is with prayer. It's not that the second you become a Christian that all of a sudden you're a prayer warrior and, you know, you have it all figured out and you're really good at it. You need to learn how to pray, right? Just like with meditation that it's going to be uncomfortable and clunky and not feel very good at first. The same is with prayer. Nobody is good at it when they start, right? You kind of need to get into that mode and that practice. So meditation is kind of the foundational piece um, because it gets you into that attitude, that refocusing, right? And it helps you bring you back into um, a focused kind of mental state. Well, prayer is really an extension of that and it's the communication piece. Um, I think we kind of need to reframe how we think of prayer, um, that it's not just this one way thing, right? It's a communication. There's whole degrees that you can get on communication. So we need to learn kind of how that communication works. First, it's not going to feel good <laughs> to start. We as humans, right, we have to learn how to talk. We have to learn words and then sentences and paragraphs and then you spend years, um, you know, studying English. And the same is kind of true on our prayer development journey, right? You need to learn the words of kind of Christianese, um, you know, and then you learn sentences and then you get up to these big long prayers. I mean, you're not going to start out praying for like 20 minutes, right? But people get really discouraged. So when we're thinking of communication, I think Jesus gave us the perfect example and we never think about it. He said, you know, come to me as a child comes to a father. And I think we glance over this a lot because when we start prayers, we start by saying, you know, father in heaven. Um, but we never really look at that word father, right? When you're talking with your dad or or a parent, right, or a guardian, kind of someone in that in that same kind of role for you, right? You talk with them about everything. It's not just your needs. It's uh, I'm going to tell you how my day went, what I'm struggling with, how my friends are, what I'm excited about. Here's this cool thing I did. I got a really good score on my math test, right? But we also come to our parents and guardians with um, requests like I need help with this or hey dad, can I have a car? Right? You ask for things and you kind of develop that relationship. It's supposed to feel intimate and connected, but you spend years learning how to communicate with your parents. And maybe even at that, <laughs> it really wasn't until I was like 20 that I figured out how to communicate with my dad. And I'm still not good at it. Dad, if you're watching this, sorry, I forget to text you all the time. Right? It's a discipline. It's something we need to work at. It's the same with our relationship with Christ. We need to start praying with the small stuff. I would always tell my small group girls, big and small, God loves it all, right? You're not going to start out with these lengthy prayers. Start out with things like, Lord, help me today. That's it. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, crazy or, or complicated. It's as simple as that. God, help me love people better today. Hey God, I need help on my math test. 
hey God, I'm having a rough day at work. It should just kind of be a conversation, right? And God wants to celebrate those moments with you. And when we talk about praying without ceasing, um, it's just like meditation. We need to work up to it, right? We're not going to sit and meditate on things or have that like ability to focus for 20 minutes at a time right away. But we should be able to kind of enter that mental state um, as we get better at it more often. Same with prayer. I love to, like when I'm playing my Switch and I get a cool achievement, I'm like, God, thanks so much for video games. You know, this really made me feel good today and I, I'd like to thank you for kind of putting this in front of me. That kind of stuff. Now, the, the hows, whats, and whys, kind of how do we do prayer, right? This was something that I really struggled with and I think a lot of people do because they feel like I have to sit and, you know, depends on how you were taught to pray, right? You kind of got to put your hands here, head bowed, you know, you have to do it in a quiet space. Just like meditation, that's not true. Well, I think quiet space and, you know, solitude with prayer has a really important place. Um, I think we need to kind of get outside of the box with it. Um, prayer, you don't have to be in one kind of position. I love to sit just back like this, kind of with my hands up in a comfortable kind of position. Like meditation, you should be comfortable in prayer, right? You're sitting, spending time with God. You're talking to him. You shouldn't feel really weird about it. Now, stuff like kneeling, um, which is talked about in the Bible that you should be doing, that's when you're farther along in your journey and you really want to express something to God that's important, right? When I'm kneeling and I'm praying with God and I kind of have my hands, I put them on my forehead like this to kind of help me like feel a physical touch with something. Um, that means like God, I'm coming to you with something pretty big right now, right? That's that's me kind of demonstrating and, and helping my physical body focus in and be like, this is big. I need to focus on this right now, right? So don't limit yourself to posture. Now, how do you pray? This is a big one. Um, there's no one way to pray. We need to think of it and reframe so it's a communication, right? And just like in communication, there's a lot of different ways to, to communicate with one another, right? We text, we call, we write letters, we write emails. There's all these different ways for us to communicate. It's the same way with God, right? God celebrates creativity. So don't feel like you just have to sit in a quiet room, right? You're praying over the dishes or you're praying over your food. Um, but for those little more intentional times... Um, or if you're like me and you like really structured things, there's so, so much out there on to help you pray. Look for books. Um, for example, this, this book, Fervent, um, this was a really helpful book for me because it's really, it lays everything out on how to pray for specific issues and things that you're going through. And she gives you actual prayers at the back of the book. Um, and this kind of stuff was really helpful to me because when I started, I was like, I don't know what I, how do I do this? I need a YouTube tutorial. Um, something else that I really love that I thought I would hate is prayer journals. Um, and not just like a notebook. A lot of people have like a spiral bound, but I find all mine on Amazon. This is the one I have right now. It says 52 weeks. Um, but how I use it is it's got these like little sections in it, right? So like Lord, thank you, and you fill these out and, you know, teach me, guide me, highlights of my week. Um, and I love these kind of little sections because then I feel, um, you know, I'm kind of contained a little bit. It helps me recenter what I'm praying on. Um, and then, like, the next page is this reflect. So it gives me a scripture, and then It'll give me a little devotional. There's so many tools out there. And I know that this looks a little girly if you're a guy. They have male ones. Um, prayer isn't gendered, but they love to sell it to you that way. Um, find what works for you, right? I know a lot of people love those little prayer apps where you can write little notes in them. Um, or pray over the scriptures, right? The Psalms, if you really need some direction on um, which way you should go with that kind of stuff. Um, as well, don't like limit yourself to space. Get creative about it where you're doing it. 
the biggest recommendation I can give to you is go talk to those prayer warriors that you know, right? I'm sure you know someone who is just like, you hear them pray and you're like, wow, I wish I could be you. Those kinds of people have been on a journey to get there, right? You don't start out like that. And they love to talk about how they got there. Um, Debbie Huffmeyer and Carla Batch are two women who I really look up to in their prayer life. And they love talking about it. They'll happily sit down with you. Um, but those women, you just hear them pray and you're like, wow, you kind of got it together. Like I can tell you've like fought some battles here and you know, you've come out the other side and God has taught you a lot. Watch out for those kinds of people and, and go talk to them. People at church love to share their stories and they want to help you. Um, so I hope this made prayer a little more approachable to you. I know when I started, it took me years to kind of feel comfortable with prayer. Um, but remember, it's a journey, right? You're growing and, and you have to learn how to get into that mental space. Um, so don't feel like you have to change the world with prayer overnight. Um, I'm going to post some helpful things like the Book of Common Prayer, um, the Anglicans, um, really have it laid out. If you really don't know where to start to pray, that's a great one because they give you morning and evening. Um, and I'll, and I'll post some other things, um, to kind of give you some ideas on how to be creative with it. Um, let me know if that's helpful. Or if you have any cool ways that you pray that think will be helpful to others, pop them in the comments below. Let's share resources. What are we going to do to kind of get better at this? So, that's all I have for today. I hope it was helpful. Prayer is such a big, broad topic. Um, but I hope this gets you started and you at least feel a little more comfortable with it. Just remember, you don't have to have it all figured out all night, you know, all in one night. You have time and God just wants to spend time with you. That's what prayer is. It's a communication between you and God. Um, and just remember, like, listening is really, I forgot to put this in, really important with, um, you know, that's why we start with meditation, the the listening and reflecting piece so that God can speak to you because it's two ways, right? So prayer is kind of how you're speaking back to God through the things he's told you while you're listening. Um, that's it for today. Next time we're talking about fasting, which I'm excited about because it's not just about food. Um, there's a lot more to fasting and I think it's the least approachable. Um, people are really afraid of it. Um, so I will see you next time when we talk about fasting. Thanks guys.